this is Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah's back with New Covenant. This is New Covenant 2022. And we're happy that you have joined us and you're about to embark on a new video here. We're going to get this. It should be 26 or something along those lines. I don't know exactly. But to let's get going. And we, we, we greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved. So let's get going. Uh, we have this board here, of course, I'll, I'll be using as, a, as an example, an illustration to show you the basic dynamics or the measurements of heaven and earth so that you can ascertain what's going on here. Uh, many of you are wondering uh, what's going on here, but you need to just pay attention and be patient and listen to these scriptures. What we're doing is, is we're using uh, basically uh, David and a little bit of Job and so forth. I'm going to get back into some more Job here momentarily. These two gentlemen are basically our guides to uh, add a little Isaiah, add a little bit of Habakkuk and so forth. We come away with uh, what God wants you to know and, and uh, to, to uh, ascertain. And I'm going to help you on that journey as we just greet you in the only name given. We rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Paul said, rejoice. For the joy keeps coming back more and more as God's mercy continues to flow in our direction. And uh, I'm ready to get going. We have this uh, illustration up here, which really is uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. What you're looking at is heaven and earth. You're looking at the precise uh, creation, uh, the precise elements of what God created. And, uh, and there's really no uh, need to look anywhere else. Uh, most of the people who I teach and I talk to, they're not Quakers and they're not uh, Amish, Mennonite people who don't, these people don't have television. They, they, they don't necessarily think the way most Americans do. And my point is, is that this is basically the life that I live as a Bible teacher here in Northeastern United States, that these plateaus that we live on here, most of these areas are flat. And that's why there are so many hurricanes and so much, and uh, tornadoes rather, but you know, we're here to just get going and to just teach the truth without really getting too much involved or meddling with things that aren't necessarily for us. You know, uh, I turn on Fox News and, these, uh, and they're really in an uproar as to what's going wrong and so forth. And they should be, but we don't want to spend that much time on what they're spending their time on. We will identify it, what's going on is wrong, and it will disturb us. We do groan along with a lot of these um, Fox people and all the people who are groaning with the errors of society. However, I want to remind you that here at New Covenant, we're basically here to rejoice in the good stuff. You know, we, we don't want to... Uh, and I'm laughing because it's just not for us to, to, uh, to dwell, as I've talked to some pastors here recently, who are so, in, are so in, engrossed in all of the errors of the world. And uh, it's not as though I don't identify the errors of the world uh, with some of these Bible teacher friends of mine and so forth. It's just that I don't, in general, want to spend that much time talking about it. Let's put it that way, okay? What I spend my time with is what I, you know, expend my energy with, and it's the energy in the Greek, and that's for the Father's ghost. It's a love energy. It's a love force, and it's not from you. Um, they had some movies here recently where they said the force is you and all this kind of stuff, and in your, in your metabolism and so forth. But we don't, we don't teach that here. Uh, King James Protestant teaching from simple grammar is the Lord is basically your energy. He is your power. He is your strength. And you're basically a yielder. You just say yes to the power. That's all it is. It's a very important part of Protestant King James Christianity. Now let's get going. If we're going to get back into science, I have a few things I want to say. And we're just about halfway done, and that's, and that's good. We, we, want to, we want to move along and, uh, and kind of stick to the lesson a little bit. Uh, we don't want to get too far away. And I, I, I don't mind mostly this multidisciplinary teaching, let's put it that way, excuse me. I don't mind introducing different subjects at the same time. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I think it's good for you. I don't, I don't agree with a lot of people who, who say you can't teach algebra with, with, with art class or something. I, I, I don't like, I don't, just, I don't agree with that at all. 
But uh, let's get going. Jeremiah is going to, this is science 2022. We're looking at heaven and earth. We're looking at science fact or science fiction or science fact or fiction. And we're looking at science fact, which are truth or the truth. And this is pertaining to celestial and terrestrial physics. I am showing you what the entire, what they call universe is. It's all, there's no more than probably 100,000 miles to go around everything that God created. The only thing that, that, that we're not going to keep into uh, the math right now uh, is the, uh, the bottom pit or the bottom bowl that you see there. I'm not going to reference that right now. What we're talking about right now is just the square of life. That when God said he created the heaven and the earth, those were created for creatures that he created and for them to enjoy these two uh, plateaus. And, and that's what Father is saying. And, and for, the, for those of us who have been paying attention and have put a decent amount of time and energy and prayer into understanding this Bible, it's very simple and fourth graders can understand what we're doing here. This is nothing, uh, you know, it, it, there are some uh, uh, middle school conversation here and some high school, but, uh, and, and maybe even some uh, graduate, uh, you know, postgraduate. But what's the bottom line? The bottom line is most of this is rather easy. And uh, we're going to get into, we'll probably go to, uh, we'll probably do a little review on looking at the water again, which is Job 22, and talk about the water again. And then we'll look at, uh, uh, I think we've gone through 104 enough. Uh, we, we'll probably go to Genesis 2-1, okay? And that's what we'll probably do. Uh, talk about the water, then we'll go to Genesis uh 2-1, and then I'm going to stop the lesson and introduce some, some science pertaining to the science of the mind, and, and that would be in uh, Psalm 91. We're, we're going to talk about the science of the mind. We're going to talk about what is the brains, what is psychology in the Bible, and we're, I'm going to talk about that. Okay, we're, I'm going to talk about, uh, and I said 91, I, don't, I, I didn't mean to say 91. Uh, I wanted to look at, um, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures here, but, uh, and of course that would be 19. Uh, I've been thinking about 91 because 91 deals with power and, and authority in the earth, uh, which we're seeing a lot of that power and authority disappear. For those of you who are interested in political science, political science right now is, the Bible says that in the last days there will be perilous times. So what we're having is, is the master told us that hearts will grow cold. People are very cold to one another and they're not caring. And that's where a lot of problems are coming from. That's what the master said. Now, and we can bank on that. Or rather, we can, we can rely on that. There's a better word than bank. Uh, I don't want to use that word. It's a habit. Well, let's just rely on that. Now let's get going. Jeremiah is here. And we're going to look at Psalm 19.1 after we look at uh, Job 22. Now for those of you who are following along, uh, Job 22 is a very big part of your Bible pertaining to uh, creation, and, and if that's uh, ch uh, chapter 22, verse 11 and 12, when we talk about the heights of the stars, how high are they, and as far as their height goes, and, and 11, of course, we're going back, is uh, uh, thou canst see the abundance of waters that are over you. That's what it means. And, but we can see them in this illustration here. See the point? This is not complicated at all. And we, we went, we're going to go to Genesis 2-1, where, where I hammer home the point, and we're going to let that point go. We're not going to talk, I'm not going to share that with you anymore too much. And that is, is that what you see is what you get. In Genesis 2-1, the Father is telling you that thus the heaven and the earth are finished, are done. And all of the creatures are done too. That 6,000 years ago, it's rather simple mathematics, all of, all of these extrapolations and people guessing and thinking, it's not biblical. What we go to is the Bible, and we who are sound doctrine Bible teachers, and we, we end our conversation there. There's no need to go into any other conversation about creatures or anything, because host means living beings, and that's what it means. All of the angels, Adam is done, uh, the stars are done. Basically, everything is done. That's why the Lord rested on the seventh day. 
Then we go to Genesis 2, 1, and thus, or therefore, the heaven and the earth are done. And once again, the Bible refers to the heaven and the earth again as the only two places for living beings. There's never anything else mentioned, and we're going to let this go. Because, I mean, and I run into this a lot because a lot of people have believed everything but their Bible, and, and that's not good. You're supposed to believe what the Word of God says and leave it alone. And, and that's my job here, to help you to, to do that. You know, to, to be a well-done servant when the Master shows up. Well done. You know, well done means do it right. Okay? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to, uh, we're going to go back to, we, we, we looked at 19. We looked at 19 already. I want to talk about... Uh, um, Let's talk about that because we're just about done with the the, 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 uh, the top half of this board here. The heavens declare the glory of our God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. So we're going, we're going back over this again. And I want to talk about this one more time. Maybe, uh, maybe a couple more times. Where the, the firmament is the, the bow or the rainbow of stars. That's what it means. It means a, a crown, it means a covering, it means a tent. That's what it means. And, that, and, it, and, it, and it is, we're going to look at, in, in a moment, we're going to look at Job 37, which tells us what is that tent, okay? What's that tent made of? And the, the lights, that's what glory means, is energy and light. The light and the energy that's in the dome in the Astrodome, it, it reveals the, the, the ability of God's handiwork. His ability to create and to design. That's what it means. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop the lesson here for a moment. I want to talk about a few things. We're going to have an interruption here, and we'll get back to, uh, we're going to go back to Probably, we might go to Psalm 19, or we might go to Psalm 57. We already went over that. Uh, maybe Psalm 115. And talk about God's will here, and how he created things based upon his own determination and his own counsel. And that would probably be with the Father and the Son. And that's what we're, because we're just about halfway done here, which is good. We're going to get to, uh, I think we're going to go to Psalm 115, 3, and we're, and we're going to hammer home where God is, and, and, and by now you should have come to the conclusion, it's a very simple conclusion scientifically, that God is in one place. Because your Bible hammers that point home over and over and over again, that God has a place and it's set. When I was growing up, no one, no one showed that to me or helped me understand that, that, that God has a place. It's not anywhere. It is a place. Okay? And, and it is concrete. And when we, when we listen to the scriptures, we can come away with the, the simple conclusion that the... the the dimensions of heaven and earth are not that difficult to ascertain. That's my point. Okay. Now I want to do some reading on some uh, science of conversion and science that Christians experience. In other words, what happens physically to a Christian when he is converted and he listens to these words and, and, and these uh, um, wonderful uh teachings on creation, what, what happens to people? What, what's the big deal here? You know, what, what does God's love do to the person, uh, you know, scientifically? Let, let's take a look at a little bit of that. I think that's very interesting that we should do that. Kind of a medical, and we're kind of going from, uh, probably from, uh, I would say Psalm 19, where we're headed, uh, is an excellent reference point. Uh, we have a couple of scriptures here where 
David talks about he is fearfully and wonderfully made. And let's think about that for a moment. Uh, we might turn to that in a moment. But you were fearfully and wonderfully made uh, in your parents, your mother's womb, with the union of your, of your parents. And let's, let's talk about a little bit pertaining to... Uh, let, let, let's go to 19... Seven. Now, why would the Bible talk about creation? Let me share this with you. This is very important. Why would the Bible talk about creation and the beauty of creation and through the eyes of David, uh, through the Holy Ghost of Father, God, Father's Spirit is talking to him and sharing these things with him and, uh, and to make sure it's precise. You, you get the point? And so what's happening, all of a sudden, he changes gears in verse 7 and says, the law of the Lord is perfect. Stop right there. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how creation is perfect and in order, and, and things that are not going to work, the Lord will discard. Because he wants everything he made in order. And what's happening at, in verse 7, 19, 7, is, is that God is sharing with you the fact through David that you're going to have to get in order. And, and when the Bible says to repent and be baptized, it means that you're getting back in order now. And once you get yourself back in order, you're going to preserve yourself. It's self-preservation. You know, Christianity is not a religion like a, a Buddha or something where, you, where he tells you to throw yourself down and, and feed lions or animals and stuff like that. That's... That's not a sound psychology at all. Now, Christianity teaches you you help others, but you also help yourself tremendously. And when you get in order, when you get back in order, excuse me, when you get yourself back in order and you, and you start listening to what, you're supposed to, what, you, what your responsibilities are in, in the fear and the respect of the Lord, then everything gets back in line. And once you're back in line, you will survive. You, you, you are preserving yourself. And that's the point. Now, I want to talk about how... Uh, and, and let's read these scriptures before I get into them. And I have one of my uh, relatives' favorite scriptures, which is 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So what we have here in 1914 is one of the most significant scriptures in your Bible, which deals with, hum with humility and submission, which is what Israel means. It means, I am submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Israel means. My students, many of them, they used to uh, sing the Pledge of Allegiance or recite the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and they would do that in the morning, and, 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 uh, and a couple of times I remember telling them that I really enjoyed you declaring that you are one nation under God. This is extremely significant. It is of the utmost uh, uh, profound, it, it is just uh, the apex of serious. You can't get any more serious than for you to put yourself in line. And I told the students that I'm really gratified, I'm very happy that you have placed yourself where you belong. That God loves you and, and he loves humans. Uh, and at the same time, he wants you to understand where your status is and what your role is. You were created essentially to be a servant of the Lord and to obey his commandments, and that's what you were created for. And it's not a bad deal at all, and, and you should enjoy it, acknowledge it, and, and I told it. And the students were a little surprised, because they don't get very much religious teachings at all, or God teachings, even though they say one, one nation under God. It wasn't my job to give them a lot of religious teaching, uh, per se, but I did sign on to tell them that I am gratified uh, that they are American citizens and that they are 
devoted to the country and that they understand that they are under God and God is over you. And that this is extremely significant and, and that uh, what way? And that let the words of my mouth, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So we're here to, to let our lives become a well-learned, uh, we're, 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 we're going to be a well-educated individual who is educated in doing the things that please God. That's what that chapter and verse mean. It means that I am going to meditate and think about the things that are acceptable in the sight of God. And I do that by going to 1997. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than fine gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and is, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Let's stop right there. So we have a a set of, uh, of, um, of ideas here that are, once they're employed, then we have good results. Because the results are a converted soul. And that is a scientific fact that when you seek Jesus Christ to please him and serve him, because the word servant is used there again. Extremely servant, ex ex extremely, excuse me, extremely significant. And the results are what you want here. You want a converted soul. And that's why I want to spend a little time right now. Take, we take a break on heaven and earth. Let's just insert you in heaven and earth. Because you're part of heaven and earth. Because you're like these two people here in the middle of this uh, uh, creation. You, you have water over you. And you have water under you. And you have some land to stand on. And that's basically what you are. in the grand scheme of what exists. And, and the result of you seeking the Lord is your, your soul is converted. Okay, conversion means it's been totally changed. And there's nothing like an individual who is totally changed for the better, completely changed. And what does that? The law and the teachings of the Lord. And what the Lord has to say is sure and rock solid. And it makes people who don't know that much and who are very simple, it makes them complicated and wise. It makes them intelligent. The statutes of the Lord are right. They're correct. And what does it do? It rejoices the heart. Do, do you want your heart to be a heart that rejoices? Then you, you employ the teachings and you let the words of your mouth, which is verse 14, and the meditation of your heart be acceptable. That's the point. Do you want a rejoicing heart? When I talk to people, and I did some counseling recently, some, some, uh, 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 an individual was telling me that they, their heart, they were all just all in a fix uh, with depression or sadness and whatever, uh, you know, in terms of being sad and confused. And the reason why they were sad and confused was because they did not have the law of the Lord. That's, that's why they're having these problems. They did not have repentance and baptism. They did not have scriptures that teach like we're doing here today. 
They didn't own that. You have to own this stuff. You, you have to, the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart must be acceptable in the sight of the Lord if you want the good stuff here. You want to be wise instead of very simple? Do you want to have conversion of your entire being? Well, there's nothing more scientific than that. Than that for a soul of an individual to go from being dark to having light. That's extremely significant. And the science there is uh, the, the, the entire being is transformed. To speaking lies, to speaking the truth. And when you speak the truth, what happens to your soul? It lights up like a Christmas tree. That's what happens. That's what that conversion means. There's a, lot of, there, there's a big difference between a dark corner and a beautiful uh, a Christ birth tree, which is a better, better word than Christmas. I'm not too fond of that word, but a Christ birth tree is much more beautiful if it's done right. And my brother-in-law, I haven't seen him in a while, uh, his wife used to make the most beautiful Christmas tree or Christ's birth tree. And my point is, is that that's a lot better than a dark corner. That's the point. What the Bible is teaching here, teaching us here is that, is that uh, the way God created everything in beautiful and in order, he's not going to let anybody disturb that. That's why the Bible says that the earth and heaven and so forth are established and they're not going to be moved. They're not going to be removed. They're not going to move. And it's, you know, it's, it's quite simple. And we've, we've hammered that home a hundred times here. And we're just about done with hammering that home that, you know, that what, what the Bible says is the truth. You know, Zechariah 111, the earth is still. So that means it's still. Okay, that's the report. The angels gave the Lord uh, upon that task that they were supposed to go take a look at the earth and, and come back and tell the Lord what the earth looks like. Now, the, earth, the Lord already knows, but he gave them a task to do. So the law, the statutes, the, the, the fear of the Lord, the respect of God of who he is. All of this brings all of these good things and it's scientific. You're going to get these things. It's a fact. That the physical makeup of a person will change. The physical makeup, your actual physical being, is absolutely changed and, and revolutionized. And, and, and that happens through all of these teachings. And the same mind that created uh, the, the circle of life, the stars, etc., and what we're looking at is the same person that made you. And as soon as you get in line and you continue to function as you're supposed to function, then you'll find yourself living forever. That's the whole point here. Just like the stars aren't going anywhere, you're not going anywhere. That's the point that Brother David, uh, the great-grandfather of our lovable Jesus Christ, who we love, and oh, how we do love Jesus, and we're, we're telling you that, hey, look out. Why don't you get in line? You need to respect God, the fear of the Lord. You need to listen to what he has to say, his teachings and his testimonies and his statutes for, for you walking around this city. And when you do all of that, then everything is going to be what they say in the old days, copacetic. Everything's going to be okay. In general. You know, if you don't want to go to jail, then don't do the crime. Let's put it that way. It's another way of looking at this. Now, let's get back into more scientific aspects here. Now, I, I want to I wanna, uh, shut down right here, and I'm going to go back to looking at a little bit of scientific psychology. In other words, psychology is a part of science. How does the mind work? And we just looked at a little psychology as to how, how, how do I transform someone who's having some sort of mental issues and problems? How do we fix those problems in the church? But we fix them instantaneously. We don't, need, we don't need to have any psychoanalysis. All we need to do is to tell people who are having problems to kneel before Jesus Christ, do what you're told, uh, get back in line. Understand, like my students used to say, one nation, one classroom under God. That's all we need to do. 
And everything will be taken care of at this point. As the Bible just said, the fear or the respect of God, of who he is and his position. Same as when I was growing up. If I disrespected my dad, when he asked me to do something, that's called disrespect. You, you can get a whooping. So instead of running into problems, we say, let the words of my mouth, in verse 14, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In other words, allow me to grow and to learn what it is that pleases you so I don't basically get in trouble. And then you'll be my power, you'll be my strength, and you'll also purchase my errors. That's what Redeemer means in verse 14. Okay? We're going to stop right here. I'm, I'm going to get back to some... some let's talk, let's talk a little bit about... I'm going to talk about a little bit about science and psychology and, and, and continue with, this, with, the, with the, the psychology lesson that David has given us in chapter 19, okay? Because he's giving you a psychology lesson. Then when your mind thinks this way, you're going to experience this. It's a very simple uh, psychology lesson here, okay? How, the, how, does, how does the mind work? How does the heart, how do I get my heart into a, into a position where it's going to receive happy things and enjoyable experiences? Okay, we're going to shut down here and we'll get to probably 27 here. So we're getting up there. Shalom and Maranatha, listening to the voice of the Lord.